Hi, Nick Houston here for Gotham Sound and Communications. Uh, I'm joined today by Glenn Sanders from Zaxcom and uh, one of his cats. So I, I'm going to apologize off the bat for my audio quality. I had an emergency quarantine that I found out about last night at midnight. Uh, everybody's fine. I'm fine. I'm healthy. Um, I just am working from home for the foreseeable future. So apologize that uh, you know this little microphone is not all that great. Anyway, so Glenn, you have something new to show us that is uh, kind of cool. What do you got? Well, Nick, uh, it's finally time for us to release the RX-4. RX-4 is a uh, very cool accessory for the MRX receiver. I could just unplug it. The MRX receiver is a four-channel digital wireless receiver. And basically, this will work inside of a Nova, inside of an RX-12, inside of the upcoming RX-8. And now we have this standalone adapter, which pretty much transforms it into a standalone four-channel receiver. The idea, of course, is that if you just wanted to, you know, start with Zaxcom Wireless and be compatible with all those other products, you can simply do that. The way it's put together is we just basically plug it right into the RX-4 and uh, basically drop right into a sound bag or pretty much good for any little location that uh, you would want four channels of receiver. Um, Got it. I would say it's um, powered with uh, 12 volts at about 300 milliamps. There's a, a standard connector on there, a little Hiroshi. Mm-hmm. And then right on the back of the front here, you can see it's sort of a T-shape, you'll see the TA5 connectors. So TA5 connectors uh, have both analog and AES audio, so you can use it with a recorder in either format. We, of course, prefer the uh, AES because AES is inherently a little cleaner. For, for those of you who are not familiar with the other, uh, with the Zaxcom product line, the MRX414 will slot into um, either a Zaxcom Nova, which is a portable recorder and wireless uh, system, um, and it can also slot into the RX12 or RX12R, which are um, larger multi-couplers that allow you to control up to 24 receivers in one unit. So uh, this particular uh, is would just allow you to take that one receiver from those other units uh, and use it standalone, as you said, in any way that you see fit. Right. I think the really important thing about this is that, you know, whether you're in a studio situation, whether you're in a sound car, whether you're in a sound bag, you can utilize the same receiver and the same transmitter. There's no limitation uh, based on the fact that, you know, you have to go portable. Uh, this does anything you want and adapts to any of those situations. The other thing that I think is really amazing is both the size and the power consumption. Mm -hmm. So for four channels of receiver, your power consumption is only about four watts. So it's about one watt per channel. And this is up to 10 times more efficient than, uh, than other solutions you might have. So your battery in a bag is going to last for a very long time. Uh, if you look at it in terms of two receivers and a Nova recorder, that's a one amp power draw for the recording and eight channels of receiver. So as a standalone, it's th about 320 milliamps or so for four channels of receiver, which comes out to about four watts uh, at 12 volts. So very power efficient, very small, uh, easily dissipates the uh, heat that it puts out because um, it does it does get a little warm, but of course anything mm -hmm. drawing four watts will. Um, but ergonomically, we think we have a tremendous product here. And when it comes to the range of the product, RF-wise, uh, we produce the best receiver I think we ever have. The noise floor on it is minus 110 dB, which is pretty extraordinary. And all you need is 6 dB above that noise floor to decode the signal. So the range on it would be up to 1,000 feet, whips to whips. It's, it's really quite extraordinary. Awesome. 
And uh, a couple of mechanical things I want to ask about. So um, those connectors, one thing I see that's pretty cool about where those are is that the connectors are not at the bottom. So if it's resting in a bag, it's not resting on the connectors. Well, exactly right. That was one of my design criteria. Uh, I wanted to make sure that, you know, you had access very close to the top. Uh, if we didn't do that, we would have had an overall big, long box that it would have to slide into, which is going to add a lot of weight and size to the sound bag. And I just thought to myself, you know, there's no point to that. And if we can have the accessibility of the audio connectors at the top of the bag, all the better. Mm -hmm. And then how is it um, mechanically connected? Is it just a slot in or is there something to secure it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to secure it with screws. It's not going to go anywhere, but there's a screw right in the middle here and there's a screw on either side. And if you do screw those in, uh, it's one unit. It's not coming apart. It will absolutely be solid and, uh, you know, very secure. Cool. And, um, so before we were talking a little bit before, and you were telling me about the RF performance, you had mentioned that there is a built-in bandpass filter. Can you tell me how large that is and, and what that's there for? Well, thank you. And that's a great question. Uh, typically on our receivers, our filter bandwidth is 35 megahertz. So you have a 35 megahertz tuning window that all the receivers must be in. Uh, that's pretty much the same here, except we have a 44 megahertz window. So we've opened up the window a little bit so that you could fit more channels or have a little bit more possibility. Uh, 44 megahertz is obviously more than enough uh, spectrum to get four channels of wireless. Our wireless can be as close as 200 kilohertz per channel. We like to see it before 500 kilohertz, uh, but that's more of a system thing for us. Uh, but the tunable filter, basically the way it works is you have an adjustment, you put the filter wherever you want to be, and then you can do a frequency scan and the receiver will pick out four frequencies for you. That'll be the best four frequencies to work on. And then you would simply tell it to take those frequencies for any one to four of the receivers that are available. And then you would just simply have to you know, dial that into the transmitters manually and away you go. So, you know, you don't require any programs to sort out intermod. There is no intermod uh, with our system. All you have to do is let the receiver pick the frequencies based on a real time scan and just set it on the transmitter and go. So that scan takes about 10, 15 seconds and uh, you're pretty good to go. Great. Awesome. Um, so you would also mention that these come in two different bands, just like the MRX 414. Right now we're, we're coming out with what we call the low version and the high version. So basically the low version is the 500 megahertz range. Uh, the high version is 600. And then at some point we'll have a mid version as well. Uh, but right now just those two versions. I assume that probably the mid version will be coming very shortly and will most likely, uh, tell the dealers they can take orders for that because it's just simply uh, something that we just have to do a little tweaking to, uh, to get. But, um, you know, the fact that the filters are in here was actually a big deal for us because we needed to have the tunable filters the same way we do in all the other products. But as you can see, you know, there's not a lot of space here. You can see some silver cans in there and uh, that's where the filters happen to be. So, Glenn, why don't you tell me a little bit about the front panel? I see two screens, some buttons, some lights. What's going on there? Sure, Nick. I mean, really what we wanted to do was make sure that with this receiver, that we had something that was very, very close to what we had on the QRX200. So we have two buttons here. There's receiver 1-2 button and receiver 3-4 button. And what these do, it takes the focus of the box from one side to another. So I focused it now on this side, and when I hit the menu button, I change menus on the receiver 1-2 side. And when I come over here, I focus on this side, and now I'm operating on this receiver. So, 
you know, really it's very simple to change between all four receivers and have the buttons in the middle be increment decrement as well as the, uh, the menu. I'm actually kind of looking in the monitor to see where I am here. Um, and of course we do have the, uh, LEDs here, which basically tell us that we're decoding. Uh, they'll be red or green and, uh, also, for anyone that wants them off, we can turn them off as well if they're too bright. Uh, they are very sunlight readable, which I thought was important for us to uh, to do. Great. All right, so let's let's do a little bit of a wrap up here. So four channel receiver um, that can go in a, a Nova, an RX12, or in the new RX4 standalone. Um, the RX4 standalone can literally be used anywhere because it's analog or AES, so it could be in a mixer bag on a camera on the moon, whatever. Um, how much and when can we see them on the shelf? Well, the price of the RX-4 by itself is $650. Uh, you have to add in the MRX-414 or 214. The 414 has a list price of $3350. So the combined price is $4,000. So it works out to about $1,000 or exactly $1,000 per channel. And uh, they should be shipping by the time this video is published. Fantastic. So, Glenn, in in closing, uh, you know, any uh, anything else you want to say? Any tips for cat lovers out there? Well, other than try not to get them in your videos, but I have one right here. Um, in any case, I'm really proud to uh, bring this out today. I feel it is something that enhances our system and allows people who are you know, not Zaxcom owners to get into the system and have a way to get this into a rack mount or other situations, you know, to basically grow with it and not have to replace uh, what you have. So that's basically what we got. That's awesome. All right, Glenn, really appreciate it. Um, and thanks so much for watching. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook or Instagram or maybe Twitter. I have no idea. And if you want to watch more videos like this, you can go to gothamsound.tv and um, have a fantastic day. Thank you, Nick. Always thanks, a pleasure. Glenn. You too.